Good evening and welcome to Love and Enlightenment. Um, tonight we have with us Ranchi, Louis, and of course, Dr. Reynolds. How's evening blessings today? and salutations. <laughs> you wouldn't Good be here. Mr. Reynolds if you didn't say that. Yeah, that's, you know. That's your tagline? I guess if that's what you want to call it. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to share this. Was there anything um, that you all said? Good night, Shelly. Was there anything that you all, or Wanchi, maybe you want to kind of address that post that you put up? I want to address the post. No, actually, I don't. Oh, it's you okay. don't? Did people answer your post? Um, yeah, um, Pinky answered and um, Bella. Bella also answered. And as they had some of the guys also that chimed in as well. Oh, okay. And what was yeah. the question that you asked? Um, really, um, wait, I got it right here. One second. <laughs> I'm just trying to, um, make sure I share this. So that's why I'm kind of, give me one second. Okay. So it was, uh, why, why so many women today don't need a man? Clean, clean. They don't need a man. Um, why do women feel that men are incapable of love without women teaching them. Um, I had another idea. Why do women think that they should define love and emotions within the relationship? And why does women feelings count more than men in a relationship? Or well, count consider be, to be considered, you know, more important than men. Okay. You know, yeah. Those are valid, valid questions. Um, yeah. How come you didn't answer so was, I, I just, um, I didn't, today was were just you, uh, Were you looking for women to answer that, Ranchi, or you wanted anybody to answer that? I mean, to say it was more for the women. Oh, okay. I mean, it's, it's a general, it's a general post, so anybody mm -hmm. could have chimed in. If um, the gentleman had a, a clear answer to why the women them would act or do such, then yeah. But I, I think the, the questions were more directed for the women. To the women, yeah, that's definitely something that they can yeah. express out if you, or okay. whatever. Cool. Well, tonight, um, of course, our conversation um, has to do with, you know, do, is it that because we in this modern world, um, and all the things that come along with it, that um, it just seems like a lot of people are having a hard time either finding someone, um, staying oh, in relationships. Oh, oh. Uh, it was just about keeping someone. That's kind right. Of nice keeping, staying, yeah. Well, staying committed to a relationship because I think we're in a, okay, this ain't working. Boom. Let's go. Let's just keep going. Um, or, and I know we, um, I think we posed when Pinky made her post, a couple of people will ask, like, what do you mean by that? And I had basically said that, um, you know, you hear people saying a lot because we're in this, um, you know, with social media, that brings in a, a part of it. Um, the whole dating, how people use dating apps, you know, it's just swipe to the right, swipe to the right. Um, people who have been in relationships and been hurt, now build up a wall and so getting into another relationship is a problem i saw your eyes just do that louis um and what? so there's so many things nothing i'm just messing with you there's so many things um for why it seems like you know you kind of feel like <clears throat> people put this thing that they don't want a relationship but you know they do because they're still entertaining other people um so we wanted um you, Dr. Reynolds, to kind of address that because I, I I see a lot, not just in our group, but just in in social media, you see people posting things all the time. And it, at one point, it seems like people want to be in a relationship, but then at the next point, it's like, oh, no, I'm an independent person and I don't need anybody. Um, and Ranchi and I have both said in the past that people really need to be in a relationship with someone else. 
So somebody. (laughs) So take it away, Dr. Reynolds. Well, I mean, for most people, um, we were we were born for relationships. Every human being is built into our DNA. Um, we have relationships. It's, the question is whether the relationship is going to be healthy or unhealthy, right? Whether it's going to be supportive or not. Um, but you will be in various relationships of one kind or the other. One, one thing I encourage people to do um, really is to examine all of their relationships, not just romantic ones. Examine how are you in relationships generally? Um, that would give you an idea of whether or not the relational issues really may have to do with you. Um, generally speaking, we're all uh, to some degree culpable. Um, <clears throat> so examining how you are in <clears throat> other types of relationships as well um, is a, you know, might give you a clue as to whether or not you are, uh, you know, more culpable than not in, in the issues that you go through in relationships. Um, but we are, the fundamental point though, is that every person um, craves relationships. Um, human beings um, die if we don't have relational contact. Uh, and then when I say die, I mean literally dry up and die. Um, wow! O- over time, um, if you if you if you are put on a, if you are put in a, in isolation for a period of time, um, even the 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 hardiest persons um, will suffer severe consequences from from such prolonged um, isolation. People make relationships with rats and, and cockroaches and so on in isolation because they need to relate to something um, that is alive. Uh, it's, it's just um, a, a lot of folks, um, I, I, I notice these days, um, I, I th- and, I, and I believe it's a manifestation of relationship um, isolation and loneliness. People are turning dogs into, into animals, into, uh, into human beings these days. Uh, humanizing dogs. I mean, I, I love dogs. I've always had so I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that, <laughs> that I'm talking down dogs or anything. Dogs have always been around me. I love dogs. But this 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 push I see today to humanize um, dogs, cats, and, and other um, even dangerous animals, uh, because I feel that's a manifestation of that internal deep-seated uh, desire for interaction, for connection um, with something that is alive, that can respond in some way, that can reinforce my feelings, my need for connection. Um, and so every to deny that, I think, is a, is a major issue. If you deny it, you're denying yourself. And as the more you deny yourself, the, the 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 less whole that you are, the less complete you will feel, um, and and the unhappier your your sense of self will be. Um, you cannot deny yourself, um, and that self requires connection with other selves um, that will communicate, that will talk, that will share, that will support. Um, and I'm and and, and I'm extending this beyond romantic relationships right we just uh, we need we need that connection and to the extent that we that I want that I articulate well I'm, I'm fine being alone um, you know a, that is a denial of oneself it's 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 a way of avoiding um, and uh, as you get older it'll catch up um, it, it can work for a while. If you're a young person, you can get yourself involved in various types of activities to distract you, um, you know, travel, you know, get involved in sports, your, your career, your, 
uh, and all of the other things that can distract our attention, be involved in various activist, um, uh, you know, act activism, uh, rather, even for good and great purposes, all of which are fine. But if they're substituting for that internal deep-seated need that you have, then you've got a problem. Makes sense. Sort of like how, like the big deal now, even like when you were talking about animals, how people have these, what do they call them? Support animals or yeah, that mm -hmm. you travel with yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in, instead of having the relationship with another human, the animal becomes that support. Yeah. In my, in my neighborhood where I am here, I mean, it's just gone to a whole new level. Um, I see people uh, pushing dogs in baby prams. I guess they have special prams for dogs now. Uh, and the dog and the dog is healthier than them. The dog needs to run. That's, it needs to run to I be healthy. That too. Uh, you know, but they have it locked away in a, in, a, in a baby pram because, again, they are looking for the feeling they get when they had the baby or if they had the opportunity to have a baby or grandchildren. They, they're looking for that feeling, that connection they had with that, that kid. Um, so they they recreate that whole scenario by the pram, put the dog in the pram, put clothes on the dog, baby clothes on the dog, <clears throat> and, and, and talk to the dog like you talk to a baby. You know, if you, if you listen to an adult talking to a baby, you, you see them use the cooing and eyeing and you know, all of the other, you know, sort of affectionate sounds to interact. They're using those with the dogs. Um, the, um, Dr. Reynolds, um, Pat Christian, she mm. um, she said to tell you good night, but she says she goes, she has that problem <laughs> <laughs> with animals. Well, she's not alone. She's not. It's a very <laughs> common thing today. And, 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 and big business, of course, is cashing in on it producing all of these products and, and, and telling people that your dog has to have these. Uh, and, and so they find another way of just milking um, the public because in truth, the dog does not need that. If you right. treat, like the dog trainers will tell you, if you treat the dog like a human, it will treat you like a dog. Mm. <clears throat> Makes sense. Makes and over, sense. An, over, over abundance of mm -hmm. service animals. But but yeah. some you know some some people you know actually do require it for therapeutic purposes. And I'm sure you could probably understand yes. that also. People mm -hmm. that go through like PTSD, or different things like oh, that, yes. separation mm -hmm. anxiety, different things like that. Oh yeah, I might I might need to go get a puppy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, that that would be fine. I mean, there's nothing. You know, wrong with it. <laughs> you know, there's nothing so, wrong with just, it. That's why it, I, I, I preface it, my remarks with and I love the horse and dogs. Family. dogs. Dogs are, are, are great to have around you. Um, you know, and when I worked in a mental health hospital, um, you know, I, I seen some remarkable things where the dog just comes in, uh, a, a well-trained a therapy dog, they come in and they sit with the, with the patient and, and the patient just relaxes and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. it, it just has an mm -hmm. effect on them. So mm -hmm. absolutely, I mean, there is an mm -hmm. emotional sort of release um, mm -hmm. from from the service dogs uh, and so forth. That is undeniable. It is Correct. the humanizing of dogs, of dogs uh, okay. that, mm -hmm. that, that I am um, targeting. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Makes sense. Because a, a dog yeah, cannot so substitute yeah. for a human being. It can't. Right. Right. I think um, there's a control issue, though, where, where potential relationships. What? Because you can control a dog. Yes. Dog, yes, yes, yes. To go, That's another to dimension. You can't have, yes. can have arguments with a dog, you know? Yeah. So yeah. You do have a pet that you can't control, but at the same time, you get company. <laughs> yes. And they're very so cooperative. They're, they're very cooperative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, when, you, when you show up, they'll, they'll jump when you when you, exactly. when you, when you, when you leave you, the cry. Check at them, them on your hand, and, and they're always ready. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's um, one of the things that, because of course everybody knows we always have our meetings the night before, but one of the things that I had asked um, you, Dr. Reynolds, is um, even in dating, and I was listening to a video today, I ended up posting it in the group that, um, you know, a long time ago, people dated or courted because it, the, there was an end goal. But is, you know, I feel like, the problem, that's part of the problem 
in dating now today because people are kind of coming up with their own rules mm. um, for why they are engaging in finding someone um, because they've kind of deviated from that. Or again, maybe they've been married before, they've been in a long-term relationship and it, and they have all this residual um, from yeah. it. So yeah. I just feel like there's, part of the problem too is there's no purpose in it, you know, other than maybe companionship mm -hmm. um, that's causing some of the difficulties in finding someone or in maintaining a relationship and then ultimately getting married. Well, th there is no, there is no getting around the fact that a successful relationship does require a great deal from you, um, from both persons. Um, uh, and we're talking romantic relationships, uh, but any type of relationship also would qualify. Um, they don't, a successful relationship doesn't happen because you love the person. Um, you know, one of the great mistakes that Western society has, I think, um, or the great, one of the great deceptions that Western society has fostered on us because we're not Western people. Black people are not Western. We are African um, by ancestry. We're not Western. We were given this Western mentality by uh, being transported. Um, but one of the things that Western um, society has taught us is that all you need is love. Um, and so love songs articulate this vision of a successful relationship um, once you once you love the person um, but really it goes well beyond um, the usual conceptualization of of love um, which most more often than not is attraction um, but you you the observation that you've made is very salient when we think about the impact that uh, the loss of a long-term relationship, um, whether um, it is the divorce or marriage, or the end of a long-term, you know, intimate relationship that people, many people engage in, um, without both have very um, similar impact on on the people and if if you if you want we can talk a little bit about the impact of relationship of the loss of a relationship because it it's a very um unfortunate happenstance that many of us can talk about in terms of its impact right oh, yeah. but it, it's got some other dimensions that maybe some of us have never even um thought about um, one of the one of the models that I like to use, or metaphors that I like to use for the loss of a relationship, is um, is a death. A, a, when you it, it, losing a, a marriage or a long term relationship is like experiencing a death in in, in, in many ways, um, because it is something as close to you as anything else can be. Uh, yeah, a marriage sure. is the closest relationship anybody can have. Um, and uh, once you lose that, if you lose that, attendant with that is that sense of loss, um, deep loss. And as you know, loss should be accompanied by grief. But many people don't, because they're not thinking of it as a loss um, from that point of view or that perspective, they're not looking to grieve from it um they're not looking to go through a grieving process they're not looking to attend to themselves in the way you would um when you when you are going through a grief um, um process but it is a very serious loss uh, equal to the loss of someone in death um that you love because this relationship is the closest that you've had um, and presumably you started it because you have these tender feelings for the person that you in, that you started the relationship with. There's something about the person attracted you to them. You, you, you desire to be with them and you thought that being with them would, would, would add something to your life. 
and and uh, if you marry them, you marry you get married because you're convinced that this person would would make your life better, just as you would make that person's life better by right. by both of you being being together. Um, and when you invest your entire self um, into that, you invest your entire self. And um, Ron, to you asked a question earlier. One of the questions you were reading about um, how, why e emotions are priority, women's emotions are prioritized over men. Uh, it's not really the case that they are prioritized. It is, I think, it is more the case that women invest more of themselves and their emotions into relationships. The the, the research shows men tend to approach relationship with less emotional investment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they're any less committed, but emotionally men have been trained um, and, and black men are no exception. I think we even more so than most others are trained to think about relationships in a different way than the male, than the females. Mm -hmm. So females tend to invest more emotionally. Females talk a lot more than, than males. I mean, there's no dispute about that. The research is clear. Women talk a lot more um, than, than men, generally speaking. There are some men who talk more than women, I agree. But you know, on average, uh, <laughs> women tend to be the ones who, who talk a lot more. And, and they, they want to talk about the relationship. They want to talk about the emotions. They want to talk about how they feel, um, and 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 men generally tend to not be so eager. Let me put it that way: to engage in these sort of um, the tender, you know, close, intimate type of emotional conversations. Correct. Um, I think the question came more off of the basis, not walking into the relationship. But mm -hmm. that's the in the relationship, three years into the relationship, because it's standard that men don't talk much about emotionally or anything going into the relationship. But when a man is in a relationship, he might not say many words, but for what he does say, say, you know, like, why does it, how to say, often then more likely that it goes unheard. Uh, unfelt. I would, I would uh, well, I think maybe it's it's it, uh, probably connected to tradition um, and to the way people have thought about male female um, relationships. Because, um, like like I said, women are much op more open, and fifty percent of the time, seventy five percent, eighty percent. I think the, I think some research by John Gottman showed something like 80% of the time the women are the one 80 to 85% women are the ones who introduce these sort of challenging intimate conversations and men tend to back away from them to men tend to shy away from them so when you have that preponderance of you know evidence that you know women tend to initiate that type of conversation um, when a man does say something, it it um, it doesn't have the impact, I guess, um, that it should have because you know he's he's taken so long and it's been so much work to get it out of him um, that uh, it, sometimes it doesn't have the impact it should have. Um, that that's my that's my theory about that. I, I don't know um, how uh, um, accurate I am with that, but that's my theory. But it's it's based on the fact that traditionally women definitely speak a lot more about emotions and want to hear about emotions than males. <clears throat> um, okay, but that's why I think more it was a, a question for the women because. But that's what women do. That's why mm -hmm. I think I don't necessarily why? think they could answer that question because when something happens, uh, uh, you know. Women will go on and on and on about it. A man will say, boom, and it's done. So it doesn't have the same weight or it doesn't seem as emotional yeah. um, because he's going to say a statement, he kind of wants a solution and done. Women, mm. they have to belabor the whole 
It's a process. Correct. You gotta, you, gotta add, you have to add a drama, the dramatics to it, of course. <laughs> as a it's... Woman. But where it pertains now to not just a solution, but what a matter the matter is, the end goal. Why is it now that okay? Let me draw a scenario to it. Um uh let me draw a scenario to it. <laughs> you want to make up one instead you of had a dinner, one. you had the dinner party and two couples start to go at it, right? Two couples start to go at it. But the man is talking because the, the, the couples are going back and forth. Now you hear the man's point and you hear the woman's point, but why is it that most times the woman's point is always the how to say preferred factor? I, 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 is that really the case? Um, yeah, it, no, I, I, I don't I, know. That. That. I, I know. think most times it's, it's most times that people tend to err for that direction. I know. I know most go on her. I know most times the women would, would be the ones who would do the talking. Right, um, the women are the ones who will do the vast amount of the the talking, because as Debbie was pointing out, it's a it's a process. It it, it talking is as therapeutic for them as 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 um, not talking is for men in, in a way. So it it, it 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 that's that's how they have, and I don't believe it's because they are inherently more talkative. They've just been. The, the history of, of relationships have gone in a way to, to kind of um, develop that, that, that approach in them. Um, because you do have some men who, will, who are just as talkative and more and just as um, willing um, than, than as women. So I don't, I don't think it is because they are inherently so, but it because they have been uh, women have traditionally, and this is another important point, women have traditionally been the ones who have been sort of what we call in a one-down position in vis-a-vis -vis the men. Men's voices have been privileged. Men's uh, decisions and desires have been privileged. And women have been the ones who have been ha had to bend over backwards to try to accommodate him, make him happy, um, uh, and, 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 you know, take care of him and take care of the children and take care of the home and uh, all the other um, uh, burdens that uh, the women tend to carry and and the the, the relief that they they get is to talk when 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 they're frustrated to talk um, uh, because you know they can't necessarily beat you although I did have one case where the, the abuser was the, the woman. Mm. Um, I know there's a popular case in court right now that seems to be yeah. yes, yes, yes. demonstrating yes. something like that. But I did have one yeah. case where the woman was the aggressor, definitely the aggressor. And he was the by far the victim. But that's very rare. It's, it's, the, it's usually the other way around. But Dr. Um, Runnels, do you think it's as rare as people think? I think it's not as rare as people think only because a man is not going to say that, yeah he's not gonna say that his wife girlfriend whatever <laughs> is abusing him it's just they're not gonna kind of say but it doesn't mean that it it doesn't happen and like you said i think it's an ex in the extreme cases maybe people will notice but i'm sure it happens a lot more than people even think well you know there is this there is this uh, a piece of uh, an emerging bit of research today that's showing that uh, women are becoming more violent um, compared to previous times. Um, mm. Women now have gangs. Previously, they never had female gangs. Yes. Um, it's usually males. But now you have female gangs. You have young women in high school being very violent, um, um, much more so than before. So you may be correct to some degree in that um, there is a rising level of female violence um, that uh, it's that is being uh, um, uh, you know investigated by people who are involved in that sort of thing. So, uh, so one one does have to be cognizant of that and admit that. 
they may be, but traditionally males have right. been the ones who, who, who've been the, by far right. the, the more egregious abusers of, of females. <clears throat> um, I wanted to just say Halima, um, she's, she comes on our show. She said, I think I have a male soul because I hate prolonging an argument. I just want to get to the solution. Plus I hate arguing or disagreeing in public. That's yeah, you do. You do have you do have your exceptions. You have yeah, your exceptions. I, I, I'm not that person. And yeah. she also said it's not rare that men. It's not rare. Men just don't report it and sadly are afraid to speak to their male friends about it because they're afraid of being made fun of. Um, and that's what I, I, think. I did. I did uh, in my <clears throat> clinically. I did have I did have one case where a man was raped by three women, my, by the way. Wait, what? <laughs> raped by Roger's two women. Like, what? Raped by Whoa. two women, and he was he was actually in 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 the mental health hospital, going through um, depression. Wow. That's how I met wow. him. He was in the mental health hospital. Wow. Um, he was raped. He was raped by three women. So they take him and, and okay, <laughs> and had their way. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> what a grand old time. You know, that's a that's a problem because you, it's like you would think it would not be a problem, but it was in his case. Wow. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> because I guess it was attendant with violence as well, uh, right. subjugation. Um, oh yeah, definitely. I think, that's, that I, think, I think that definitely was what made it. That is what made it become um, rip. Yeah, because. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, wants to say something else. <laughs> Lord, but, but I want to. I, I want to. I do want to get back, Debbie, to this right. notion of the the impact of the right. loss of a relationship. Uh, right. um, yeah. There is a great sense of failure and shame. Now, I want to zero in on this thing about shame, because the the last twenty years has revealed a tremendous amount of research on this issue of shame. Shame is a, has been sort of a hidden um, phenomenon. It's not an emotion only, it is also a set of beliefs that, that um, combined with emotions. And it, it tends to be very deeply hidden, but it is a powerful shaper of our ideas about ourselves and the way we feel about other people and the way we think, and this is really important, what we think other people think about us, right? Shame, shame focuses a lot on making us believe that people are thinking the worst about us. Um, and that feeling, that belief that people are looking down on me that people are thinking badly or talking badly about me. Um, that belief can have a huge impact on, on us emotionally. And shame, shame is fed by this sense of failure. When, when, we, when we lose, when we go through the loss of that relationship, we experience high levels of shame uh, and it can be devastating um, in its effects it makes us want to to um, do the worst to ourselves because we feel like um, we have uh, um, there's something about us which is um, wrong with us um, and that we can never uh, be successful um, in a relationship. So um, that that I don't want us to miss that a lot of research today has missed it but it's becoming more and more evident that this thing called shame is a powerful, devastating... Um, by the way, there is a good shame, which we can talk about another time. There is good shame. There is a, a sense of modesty that, you know, right. that keeps you from making um, a spectacle of yourself um, in a way that is against your values. But they over, we're talking about the negative impact of, of, of shame that emerges when we, when we, in the wake of a loss of a relationship. And if anyone who's listening to us today 
has experienced the loss of a relationship, think about that issue of shame and how it has motivated you. Reflect on it for a little bit, and I think you'll bring some insight into, into what I'm saying. So that sense of failure is big. It's fed by the sense of rejection. Um, you know, of course, rejection traditionally, that's, we know that when people lose a relationship, divorce or, or loss of a long-term relationship that I've invested all my time and energy into, that sense of rejection is heightened um, um, in us. <clears throat> But I want to go to specifically an aspect of relational death that is especially damaging. And that is when there is infidelity involved, when, when there is unfaithfulness, when somebody has stepped out on the other person. Um, it, it just is hugely, hugely, hugely um, impactful in, in, in many ways, um, ways that are, are often unthinkable. Um, we don't, meaning we don't think about them, right. but um, I think the single most devastating effect of it is that it destroys our ability to trust. That is probably the, the, the greatest impact and trust is fundamental to life. I mean, we've, we've got to have a sense that we can trust that, that the world is, that I'm safe in myself. Um, and without that, that that fundamental sense, um, we, we, we cast adrift. And, and if we go emotionally, um, um, spiritually, uh, mentally, psychologically, we, we, are, we can be torn apart and people turn to all kinds of um, negative behaviors to try to compensate for that, that deep-seated um, loss of, of, of self, loss, a, a, a shame that they experience, and of course, this loss of trust, this inability to trust. Um, they'll they'll engage in all kinds of destructive behaviors um, to try to regain in some way, but it's really because I feel um, so badly about myself um, that. I just, I'm not able to function in my own self-interest so that I turn my anger, my disappointment, my shame, everything, I turn it on myself and engage in destructive behaviors. Others um, may turn to other types of behaviors, whether it be um, um, sports, or hanging out with the boys, um, you know, partying, uh, you know, going or working hard, work, career. Um, so they spend all the time working, uh, you know, or some other type of negative um, response. And all of these are ways of trying to compensate for that fundamental sense of failure and loss that I've experienced. Um, it, it is devastating. Why, why though, you know, and Pinky always says that I'm mispositive and this is, you know, and it's just the way that I look at life, right? We mm -hmm. can't control what people do, right? Yeah. We, can mm -hmm. only, we can only work on ourselves and show up best that we are, right? So if someone fails us, um, and we have to also understand we can't put pe people on a pedestal. People are, are people, you know, none of us are perfect, mm -hmm. but, but why is it that people wallow in that and it stops them from going forward and giving them an opportunity to possibly meet someone who is going to take into a whole nother level because of whatever this other person did that to me, that's what I see when people have been hurt and they can't trust and they can't move on. But at the end of the day, you have now allowed this person to not only control a certain situation while you were in it, but now you're out of it and they're still kind of controlling it because you kind of stuck. Hmm. Yep. Shame. Hmm. Shame is the corporate, at least a huge part of the corporate. Um, that sense of shame because I'm 
fundamentally as human beings, we are continually comparing ourselves, even unconsciously. We're looking at others and we're looking at ourselves. Our ways of thinking about ourselves is shaped by what we think others are thinking about us. Right. Um, so really, it's really coming from us because it's our own assessment of what we think others are maybe saying about us. But that's why it's so dangerous because it's it's in my mind. Um, and it can get very irrational. Um, even when you, if you talk to someone um, rationally about their behavior and, and letting them know, you know, what you're doing here is self-destructive and so on. Rationally, they'll understand what you're saying, mm. but but it won't change how they how they feel about themselves because of that inner core of shame that has to be dealt with. Mm. It, it, it has to be dealt with. That's I think I was mentioning to you guys last night, if I'm not mistaken, that you know. Um, one of the one of the consequences we have seen now, and it's in the literature. John Gottman and others have have um, have seen it to, in their work that people who experience unfaithfulness, infidelity, uh, display symptoms of PTSD, um, which is huge. I mean, the the symptoms in you know, the flashbacks, memory loss insomnia, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, all of those, uh, that combination of symptoms that we usually associate with PTSD, people uh, who have gone through infidelity, who have been hurt by infidelity, experience them. One of the things I have noticed personally in couples where, one of, where there's been infidelity it, it, which is consistent with the PTSD as well, is that they kind of, um, they get it, there is a sort of detachment. They get, people use the expression zoned out where um, you're, driving, you're driving from work to home and you end up someplace completely different because you're just not present with yourself. Mm. And you are a totally different place than you and don't know how you got there. Um, I've had okay. I've had several clients who have experienced that, uh, wow. or or just sit in their car and can't move, can't start the car and go where they want to go. Just just sit there um, for an hour, two hours, um, um, you know, up to up to three hours. Uh, we've had that, and and that's consistent again with the PTSD symptoms. It immobilizes them um, so that. They're just not present with themselves and not um, aware of their surroundings. Even. Um, right. they, 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 another symptom of PTSD is uncontrollable crying. Just sit there and just, you know, the, the tears come and you want to stop and can't stop. Um, <clears throat> it's it, all of those are speak to this. The, the impact of an, uh, an issue of infidelity. Um, my worst case that I've encountered was um, a couple who um, they, he used to be uh, stationed in Germany back, back in the 50s. Uh, and both of them were, she was with him but he had an I, he had an episode of infidelity, one episode of infidelity as, as far as they they knew, you know, as far as she knew, and um, they they agreed that she would forgive him and that they would move on, and they both they they talked about it and agreed that she would do that, and to the best of her knowledge, he never did it again. Um, they lived fine for 25 years and and then she started showing signs of depression suicidality ended up in the mental health hospital where i was working 
And after many conversations, we discovered that it was that same infidelity issue that they had never, that she had never dealt with. Um, she just agreed with him that they would forgive, or she would forgive him, and they would move on. And they never dealt with it. So basically, and in those twenty-five years, it was still on her she mind. She had suppressed right. it, right? You know, she had suppressed it and just continued living. Um, 25 years. I've never seen it like that. And um, and she herself was surprised um, after the conversation and she realized that was the that was the underlying issue with her. Um, and she felt that she had never regained the ability to to trust, to feel safe, to uh, be honored. Uh, and respected, um, and uh, she, after 25 years, she became um, suicidal uh, as a result. Um, so I, I, I give that to stress the importance of us understanding that we need to take care, we need to stop and take care of ourselves before we even think about another um relationship. When people say, I don't want any relationship again, I'm done, I'm finished. Um, no more, I'm not, I don't want to get married again. I don't want any more, have anything to do with any relationships again. That is a form of avoidance. And it, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Dr. Rons, I hate to interrupt. Sure. Uh, t tell me what that looks like, though. Um, taking care of oneself what what, what is that what does that start where, where do you start what does that look like for mm. for folks as far as taking care of yourself after going through some type of trauma um i'll let you respond and I, i'll come back with some other stuff hmm. there are a bunch of ways um and um some some work for some work for some some work for others everybody doesn't respond to to the same um, set of um, practices in the same way. You do what you do what what you feel good of, about doing. Um, but it, but there are some fundamental um, items that should happen. One should be self reflection. You should be spending time in self reflection. Now, there's a difference between regurgitating and 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 um, rehashing um, the situation and self-reflection. They're two different exercises completely. Um, self-reflection is, is examining yourself, um, looking at how you're looking at your, your, your upbringing, looking at the things that um, affect you, um, looking at your, the history of um, your own uh, relationships, um, looking at the things that you consider important to you uh, and why they're important to you and asking yourself some hard questions about your own ways of being, um, why you are the way you are. Um, it, so it, it does have some self-reflection. People, some people use journaling that facilitates that. Um, women tend to be much more, much better journaly, journaling people than males. Males tend to poo poo ju uh, journaling, you know, but it's a very effective method of self reflection. And, and you know, you don't have to share it with anybody. You can tear it up or burn it to, uh, when you're done or whatever. But just the act of going through that um, is, 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 very, is very helpful and doing it consistently because it promotes. Um, reflection and increases self-awareness, which are very key things. Right. Um, another important um, aspect that it should include is um, connecting with healthy people. Connecting with health. One of the mistakes a lot of folks make who um, go through relationship loss is that they um, they connect with other people like themselves who have lost relationships or who have troubled relationships and they sort of have this 
regurgitating experience where they reinforce each other's negative um, ways of being. Misery like company. <laughs> yes. And that doesn't help you at all. That just that just reinforces uh, that negative mentality that right. you have and it, it, it doesn't help. I mean, you might feel good when you're talking and you're cussing the person out and and, and you and your friend crucifying them verbally. That may give you a, a brief sense of relief, um, you know, but that won't last um, once it's mm -hmm. done. You know, That's so right. what you do, then what you want to, want to do rather is to connect with healthy people um, and, and people who will be honest with you. You can talk with them and they'll give you honest feedback. Um, they're not going to BS you. Uh, but they'll, they'll, they'll give you honest, clear feedback um, about what they really think. And that's what you want. That's yeah. what you want. Um, not people to reinforce avoidance um, and so on. So being part of a healthy community is important. If your church is a healthy one, some people don't have healthy churches. If you're not in a healthy church, don't stay there. It's not going to help you. Um, but if you're in a healthy community there in a church, wonderful make use of it uh, find a mentor there talk to them about you know what you're thinking and let them listen to the feedback um if like if you're a religious person like me a, a spiritual person um strengthening your connection with god can be a major source of strength for you um for some people they're not so it wouldn't work but for those of you who consider that as important it, increasing that connection with the divine spending time in meditation and, 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 and reflection uh, on your relationship to the divine is really, really, really very helpful um, and goes along. And of course, if you're still having these issues, uh, then then you, 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 you should think about seeing a, a counselor um, or coach. You have good coaches who are well trained to do these things. Counselors or coaches who can work with you to kind of, if you don't have that community, a counselor can be um, that person. I should I should take a moment to talk a little bit, just a minute about counseling. Counseling is is is, is a, just having a specific type of conversation. A counselor has a certain kind of conversation with you, for which they are trained. They don't have to have had your issue. They just need to have had the training on having the conversation with you, because what you want is a conversation that will help you reflect on your own situation, on your own issues, and the counselor knows how to have that conversation. And that's, that's a lot of people mistake counseling to believe the counselor is going to lecture you or tell you where you went wrong, or tell you do these five things and you'll be fine. Or, no, a counselor has a certain kind of conversation with you um, that other people won't have. Um, because they one they're not trained to, and two it's uncomfortable, and they don't want to have that with you. Um, so uh, uh, seeing a counselor um, is would also be very important. Volunteering, um, but a caveat: volunteering should not substitute for working on yourself. A lot of people get lost in all kinds of wonderful causes, volunteering. Uh, just so they don't have to think about the issues. Distraction. Yes, it doesn't work. It will work for a while, but the older you get, the more that will uh, fail you. Uh, because as you get older, your desire for community and connection increases, and your your circle of close connections diminishes. People are dying um, around you. Um, and and so you need that sort of connection. And um, activities and volunteering won't substitute for that. But volunteering, in addition to self-reflection and the other things, can be a wonderful way of, of replenishing yourself, replenishing your spirit. And helping others is helping yourself um, as well. So volunteering, whether in a Red Cross or in a religious setting or some other way, 
um, it has the same um, set of benefits. Yoga, you could practice, some people get into yoga. Um, again, yoga matched with the other uh, um, things that we have mentioned um, can be very, very useful for you. So all of these, and there are others, there are a bunch of ways that you can think about um, taking care of yourself. And of course, common um, coping things people do, get exercise, walk daily. Um, doesn't have, you don't, don't have to be an athlete, just walk. Um, um, and if you have a companion to walk with, it's even better that you guys can talk while you walk and you have honest conversations. That, that makes the walk therapeutic. Um, or, or swimming, sports, um, all of those are good, useful um, things. But again, the core of it, you must be self-reflecting, you must be looking at yourself, and you must be getting honest feedback from others. And not only you talking with yourself, but you must be getting honest feedback from others um, so that you can, that's, that's how you grow. Really, really important. Thank I get that it that it it differs it differs um the you know for everyone I mean if there's mm. different ways that you can uh, find ways to self reflect um, but I think ultimately and and I say this because uh, the severity I guess of the separation or how you handle the, the infraction the separation or whatever I guess I think ultimately um in, in my opinion I think constantly probably be uh the best approach because of the ability to actually handle it mm -hmm. yeah the separation um so i i and, and, and i use myself as an example because i remember um not adhering or not agreeing to the the, the therapy and until i went into a different type of therapy and i had the conversation i was like oh okay i, I see the difference now Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, that, that was a that was a time ago, but 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 currently, and I'm saying this, I, I'm not giving any details, Debbie. <laughs> I'm just but listening. Currently, you know, I I I can't believe I even saying this. I lost someone there, someone there to me. I lost when I say I lost someone there, it was a bit of a separation, um, very recently, and um, but I mean, still on on you know, when I say lost someone there to me, it's it's more. Um, things that I, I I didn't see going in that direction. So of course it's now figuring out well what went wrong and 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 it's you try to repair and you try to do this and that, but um, it's just one of those things where um, what, what's next? Mm. Yeah. yeah, you have to be okay with what's next. Yeah, because and that's the thing. You, that's the thing. You need to be. Open for prepared it. And, and, open. and ready exactly. To, to exactly to to receive what what's whatever next is. What and, next and, is? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, time is our greatest friend, and we ain't got much of it. I I need to go and um, get my insurance card because I think I owe you. <laughs> I've been saying that. <laughs> no, but it's true. I, I mean, and Dr. Reynolds, honestly, <laughs> when when we started this whole platform. Part of the reason why I, I I just thought that this was really good was because I realized that I had a lot of friends and I'm just talking in terms of women. I, I have a lot of friends that only saw things from their point of view, didn't realize mm -hmm. that men go through this as well, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. different, different issues, right? And again, because men, for the most part, are we think are reserved and don't mm -hmm. say, they don't speak up, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't, we haven't created a society where we we encourage that as it is mm -hmm. anyway, right? And so I felt like it was important to have this, and this is why we have these discussions every week, because I realized that a lot of people have frivolous conversations with their family, with their friends, but they don't have real serious conversations that not only can affect them, and and it's it's for me it's just leaving with a different perspective, or or realizing that there's. There's other ways that you can look at this and um, and and listening from different people, different experiences. And you like you said, having that support. And to me, that's what love and enlightenment I feel is supposed to be about having 
a group of people who, who some, some seem like are amazing friends, but it's just people who want better for themselves, better for their legacies. Because again, we are our children's first teacher, right? So if we can't get it together, how do we expect them to, uh, right? Because we mm -hmm. too are a product of our parents. Um, but having these conversations, but like you said, having impactful conversations um, is what is going to help people, again, maybe even decide because of this, I need to go get counseling because yeah. this is just the, the beginning, but I need to take it to the next level so that I can be yeah. healthier and better. Mm -hmm. it, you, you, you're right. Um, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm talking with other people who are saying the same thing I'm saying, it's like talking to myself. It, right. Correct. It's, it's not, it doesn't help me. Um, I need people to be honest with me. I need people to speak the truth um, in love, I mean, they're not going to be like, right. you know, but in love and 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 with and and with the desire to help, um, because you know, an honest conversation is will go a lot further than just people telling you what you want to hear. Right. If they're just telling you, you know, reinforcing your your common ideas. And here's the thing, um, as well. The the healthier you get, the more you're able to attract healthy people to you. Um, if, 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 if you stay in that unhealthy frame of mind, you will find all kinds of quacks and, and, and idiots and, you know, trying to get with you. Um, right. because, because it's, you know, you attract that, um, right. I'm, 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 I'm I personally the energy, the energy that's being matched. You find a better term for it, um, but but and here's the other part of that is that you you're better able to detect um, the, the 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 idiots when they come. The quackiness, <laughs> the quacks when they, they, right. they, they, on, the on the unhealthy people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the unhealthy people. Um, you you are better able. You have a better. Um, um, monitor to be able to 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 detect um, that that type of uh, unhealthiness and 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 get away from it um, because it ultimately that is not going to be of any help to you at all. So the healthier you get, the the better your chances are of attracting another healthy person. And this is not this is not just me saying that. This is, the research shows it. There is good research. To show. Attachment research um, um, shows that people with a healthy attachment style tend to attract people, other people with a healthy attachment style as well. People with an unhealthy attachment style attract unhealthy. Um, unfortunately, um, stunning. And, and, so, and that's and that's good that you say that because again. You hear so many people say, I can't find anybody and people are this and whatever, whatever the case may be. But like you said, it's either you are attracting that because there's a lot of things you still have to work on, number one, or number two, people are coming and you don't have boundaries. You don't have, um, you yourself are not healthy enough to be able to see that that person is not somebody that you want to be connected to, you know, mm -hmm. because one of the things I always my close people near, near to me will always hear me say everybody that comes into your life was not meant to come into your life for a relationship because of course you that, if that's what you're seeking that's what you think you're attracting but this person might be coming in to teach you something this might be just a acquaintance acquaintance or this might be somebody you you don't have to have any relationship with but because you yourself are so engrossed in wanting a relationship or whatever it is that you want, mm -hmm. you're not seeing past all the other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it, it's that's definitely true. You, I, I the, it. It, it underlies the point that you need to be taking care of yourself. Right. Um, in, instead of investing energy and time into um, Oh, I don't want a relationship. All men, all men are dogs, um, kind of thing, or, or all women, for that matter. Uh, right. or, or um, <clears throat> you know, 
instead of spending you know a lot of time doing that um uh, you're far better off investing that emotional spiritual uh, mental energy into taking getting yourself better healing healing the heart healing the the the, the pain that you live with addressing it directly getting that shame out in the open and looking at it um, and examine it that because shame only works when you keep it in the dark mm -hmm. if you bring shame out you you lance it you weaken it you you get the victory over it but it only is but that, I, I, I do feel is the 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 more older generations or the all the generations, I would say, has that shame problem because I would say the younger generation shame box is broken, <laughs> or, or just or limited, just very very limited. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they don't carry shame the same as the the older ones would back in the days. You know, it's a lot different today. Where it pertains to shame, I would say that. Ranji, I I don't disagree with you, and you said something just now, um, which I, I want to point out you said it works differently now right the shame is there but they just deal with it differently no. differently yeah yeah it, it, so it, there is, there say, is it's attacked it's attacked faster yes There's a lot of more speed to it yeah yes they respond to the shame differently to the older to the older generation you're right Correct. I, I i would definitely uh, uh, agree with that um, but the shame is there. Is is just how we deal with it that that it's changes. How we deal with it, correct. Yeah, yeah. But it, be, so, because it's always it's always around. It was there um, for those of us, for those of you who are religious or biblical in any way. You remember, shame was introduced when the two people um, ate the fruit that they shouldn't eat, and then as a result, they, they hit themselves. And when God came down and said, why are you hiding? And they said, well, you know, we found out we were naked and we were ashamed. Right. And yeah. we hid. And from that moment, um, we have been afflicted with this disease of shame that the keeps us hiding. That it, 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 shame hides and it makes us hide. Um, mm -hmm. It hides our emotions, hides our, our, our issues, hides our ways of thinking about ourselves. Uh, it just is a devastating um, thing to uh, to deal with. And and shame can be passed on. We pass on shame, um, right. you know, uh, because it, 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 it is it is that invisible thing in there that can that is doing this damaging work and we don't see it. But again, like I said, the way to deal with it is to bring it out into the open. Right. True. Definitely. True. Definitely. Sure. And I feel fear, fear also, fear also is a, is a next thing a lot of people are faced with, where it pertains to relationships and growth and moving forward. Fear mm. of yeah. everything, fear of co yeah. uh, commitment, fear of attachment, fear of... Yeah. But, but to me, but you know what? It's a lot of fear in it that is not addressed. It, they won't call it fear. But but them, listen, say, but think about scared, this. Scared, but, but is it fear, really fair, or is it that you don't have control of what's going to happen next? Is the problem? And that's a scary point. And that's yeah. a scary point. So so because... you're you're fearful that you won't be able to to dictate how the next step is going to go, and so why why even do it? Because I don't know how why it's going to end up. And I'm going to be mad if it doesn't go the way I think it's supposed to go. <laughs> that's exactly. not, and that's I, not life. My thing with that is the, we, we see so much things around, around the world, right? We always in field, standard. But we wake up every morning. We get in our cars every day. We go to work every day. We eat right. food. People's hands that we don't know who in the kitchen, but we're eating. <laughs> we feel right. all day. We face right. our fears every day. Right. So I... I, I, I I'm, I just said different. For me, I, 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 you face your fears. It's standard as a child. You always tell the children, hey, face your fears. You're afraid mm -hmm. of the dark, turn off the lights. Yeah. Nothing in the room with you. Mm -hmm. Put them back on, it's still the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, for me, as an adult, you would, people will just come across these, these emotions where as they cannot 
they're not allowed to feel certain things or you know express the way in a, the self in a certain way because of how it will come off like the groups will be laughing at them or whatever but but yeah. again you have to worry about self other people aren't going to make you happy you got to make you happy number one and number two only you know what's going to make you happy and that's to me that's the biggest thing with with social media is that things are now in a in a microscope so everybody's looking at everything. You're comparing yourself to other people. You yes. want to appear a certain way. Yes. To me, that is definitely having a big problem because again, Children. yeah, you, 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 yeah. and watch you have said this in a long, a show a long time ago. You know, you see people putting out this image, but you don't know what's going on in their house, right? Mm -hmm. But you want, you don't feel if you can't have that same thing or you're not showing that same thing that there's, again, there's shame because mm -hmm. you don't have the same thing as them or, or whatever the case may be. But I mean, and again, that's where I think these conversations are really important because people have to gain perspective of why somebody does something. Um, it, you have to be happy with you, you know, and your life and the decisions you make. And every decision isn't going to be great. You know what I'm saying? But yep. you fall down and you get back up and you start all over again. That's right. For well, me, as long as the clock ticking, you still have life. You're still breathing. Amen. Live. <laughs> live. You God gave you life to live. You have life to live. For those that believe in God, don't believe in God. It doesn't matter. The science is to live. The science is move forward. Because the clock only goes forward. It don't go back. So, was Yeah. You have to live. Okay, Ralph. I I would say live healthy. Right. Live healthy. Live healthy. Yeah. Live healthy. Yeah. Live, live spiritually, live. emotionally, mentally. Right. Live and express. Psychologically. Live and, express. Healthy. and I and oh, also I one of the things I always say is to live intentionally because even when you were talking about the whole infidelity, people don't understand. And Louis. Louis talked about this when we first started. People don't understand what they can do to damage somebody else. So mm -hmm. if you are truly living intentionally, and again, do unto others as you have them do unto you. If you're right. in a situation and it's not working out, and it's not, we have to be honest with ourselves, with the other person. Okay. It doesn't make sense to do cause even more harm on this person yeah. because everybody is going to deal with it differently. And so that's one of the things I think like, especially younger, well, I mean, older people too, but young people have to understand that your actions do have ramifications on people. Yes, Some people indeed. can be through it with no problem and other people are damaged for a long time or for life yeah. because of decisions that you make and you can't say you love somebody you care about somebody and just do stuff willy-nilly and don't think about how it can really affect you know this person you say at yeah. that time that you care for or you love you know um so infidelity yes causes issues with that person in that relationship but at the end of the day this is something that could carry them through for a long time you know so it's a huge component to really treat people how you want to be treated. As cliche as it may sound, it, it really is uh, significant and it carries a lot of weight because I, I always try to um, think about if you're doing something, stop for a minute and think, would you like me, the identical scenario, would you like me to do that to you? Mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we don't do that. We don't take the time to think these things through. We don't live intentionally. We literally just make it through life. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't get to this intentional state till life has put us through a lot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. It's not something that's put into us from young. So. The thing is, too, the, the, the moments in life is what actually makes you, you, at the end. You don't know. I mean, to say, if you never went through anything, you won't be able to speak on anything. You know, yeah. it's through our situations that we face and we go through. Is how we able to, how to say, interact or talk about it or be expressive about it. Right. Because if if you never knew it was black, <laughs> what you would have called it? Right. If you and never just know like what African was, or uh, American or Latin was, or uh, Spanish was, you you never know. So right. I, I do right. feel that like people need to live. Right. and experience and through the errors you make because mistakes is part of life you need to make exactly. mistakes. exactly part of shame exactly. right that, you make that's, mistakes. That's, 
Uh, and, and that's what we do here. Testimonies. We bring right? our experiences. That's what we do here. The goal, the goal, yeah, and the goal is you go to school, you make mistakes when you start school, but you finish, right? You stick at it. You make a mistake, and then you get corrected, and then you go forward. Next level. And that's what you're supposed to look at life as. You, you make a mistake, okay, this is where I went wrong. How we could, go, how we could get better from this Step standpoint? Because, yeah, because a situation will always come along next. There's going to always be a next situation. There's going to always be something else going to reoccur. Life happens. And yeah. sometimes things happen in a moment, and you, you don't have control. I won't say you don't have control, but sometimes you don't have no control in a situation. Sometimes it's just out of your head. Very because much so. We, we could say, um, you no, know, but you know what life is. You could focus, but at the same time, we do drink. There are people that do smoke. You have people that are handling situations under stress differently, you know? <laughs> yeah. That act out, that, that, um, that have mental health, let's say, issues or whatever. They got people that are bounce, bounce off of walls. So the uh -oh. dynamic the dynamic in your life, no matter what, and just as uh, the, the moon goes around the, the, the earth and the, the everything in rotation going around the sun, there's a lot happening in life the same way. That you have no control, so you just got to live. For me, that's you know, you just have to live. In my opinion, you have to live. The errors you make today is what gonna make you for tomorrow. So you just have to live. You can't um, fear it. Uh, Debbie, I'm, I'm just, I've, uh, I'm just looking at the comments, and a couple of folks have asked me to a couple of questions here. So I thought, okay, it's sure. okay. I could take a look at them. Yeah. Um, yeah, right somebody, somebody says, do you have some tips to identify trauma that is stored at the somatic level as the bodily level? Any thoughts on the polyvagal theory and states of being? <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't, I, a heavy question. I, I, yeah, <laughs> By the way, you have some very smart people on this. Uh, Apparently. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reading some of these comments and they're right on the money. There's some very smart people here. We're going to have um, to start charging, folks. <laughs> the, 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 the notion that uh, that trauma is stored in the body, though, is absolutely consistent with current um, um, literature and, and, and neuroscience, studies in neuroscience. Um, that is to say, the pain, the, the body or, or the system, because you're one system, your body, your mind, your 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 your, your what we call your spirit, which is the essence, your identity, who you are, um, all of it is uh, comprising your self system. And um, the body, the, your system can use any part of you to store uh, trauma and pain. And that includes the body. One of the signs of that, um, one of the key signs of that is if you have um, um, mysterious types of illnesses that uh, that remain undiagnosed, uh, that have no resemblance to any other um, set of symptoms um, that that is normally uh, that doctors or people who are experts in that area can diagnose. Um, and uh, when you when you have that. It's one of the, it, it isn't invariable. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who has mysterious pains necessarily have that, but um, it is one of the areas that is a key indicator of whether or not you may be storing up uh, pain in the body and, or, or trauma in the body that is not, it remains unaddressed. Um, another pointer is what do you, how do you, what happens when you feel, if you feel relief? What are you doing when you experience relief from that, even temporarily, in the short term? What what what's happening when you experience relief? That gives you a clue. Um, if 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 you feel relief when you are um, laughing or talking or sharing with others, it's one of the uh, indicators that this is not something that is necessarily um, biological. But uh, but rather something more associated with the trauma that you may be um, experiencing. If also you tend to avoid, um, tend to engage in things that 
distract you. Um, um, that can also point you in the direction of thinking that the, this, the pain that you may be experiencing in the body might be something that um, fills that definition. Um, so I, I, the research is pretty current and is sufficient for me to be able to say there is definitely something to it that, that trauma and pain um, does, um, can be stored um, in the body in various, in various ways. <clears throat> Dr. Arnold, along with that, um, I know my sister introduced me to this book years ago called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And that book, so anytime anybody tells me, oh, this is what's going on with them, I always refer to that book. Um, I look it up and it talks about that same thing. A lot of times if you have like a pain, let's just say you have a pain in your knee and you look up in her book, she talks about, I think, I'm not exactly sure. I'm just using an example. It could be like it's a control issue. Like you're you're losing control. You don't have control about something that's going on in your life, and so it's showing up in in a in some sort of illness. Um, and so her belief is that you start to have to speak affirmations into that to change your mindset about that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's again because it's not just what any kind of pain you actually went through but it's also what you're telling yourself, sort of the same thing, what it is you're telling yourself and it's manifesting in an ailment. Um, so anytime, a lot of times when, when even I have like a pain, I look it up like, okay, well, what's this coming from, you know? And maybe sometimes it does correlate, you know, people who have heart issues, sometimes they say it has something to do with like a love issue. Um, and so you have to speak certain things into your life. And so um, I've always found her, that book to be quite interesting when I read um, what it what she talks about is manifesting in your body and what you're kind of going through in life at that time. Uh, yeah, this person says self reflection as a window to self awareness is tricky when the lens or the mind's eye is littered with experiences of trauma. That's I, I, absolutely on the money. That's why I've been insisted that you shouldn't rely on your self-reflection alone. Um, get feedback from from honest people who um, will who will share with you um, that that becomes the basis of your um, that becomes one of the key aspects of your consideration as well. Your reflection. Mm -hmm. So your reflection along with the feedback you get from others is a critical um, cycle that uh, is important for you to keep in mind as, as you do this. It's not just you. If it's only you, then it, it, you'll end up reinforcing your own um, thoughts. But um, getting quality feedback from others, and that's part of the benefit of talking with a counselor as well. You get the benefit of feedback from someone who is um, not only trained to do it, but someone who is committed to being honest with you um, as they as they help you reflect more meaningfully. A counselor can help you see if you are simply um, 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 in, in a sort of self-reinforcing cycle or you are actually um, taking that next sort of meta level and, and really examining um, yourself at a level that um, few people actually do, um, but a counselor can help you get there. <clears throat> right. Well, so, um, well um, there is, uh, go ahead. There, no, go ahead, Dr. There, there, there is one area that I, that I left um, to introduce, introduce okay. because um, it is, it is an area that re requires um, a great deal of uh, sensitivity and, 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 and support when people do it. When, uh, when you have been engaging in all of these or some of these um, self-care, self-development, self-growth type of um, experiences, 
as a way of helping your healing process, um, one of the key things that you will have to consider in time is the issue of forgiveness. <clears throat> forgiveness becomes sort of, um, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a higher level, but certainly it's something that you have to be ready for. Um, uh, when I say ready, I mean mentally at a place where uh, I say I want to engage this because healing through forgiveness, yeah, I feel will ultimately be a part, especially of those types of relationships that have had infidelity in them. Um, you inevitably will come, have to confront the issue of, of forgiveness. However, um, you know, for, there is so much um, misinformation connected to forgiveness, what it is and how it, one engages with it, that um, you are better off many times sort of um, working with someone who is able to um, help you um, do this in a meaningful way. Um, because some, for example, one of the common misunderstandings is that you have to, of course, you have to um, um, reconnect or, or, or in some way uh, talk with the person that you're forgiving. Um, very, very common misunderstanding, um, especially if you're a religious person, you have that perspective that if you forgive, then you should also um, in some way reconnect with that person. Uh, we, in, some, in some instances, they'll say be reconciled to that person, but the forgiveness process is much more complex um, than, than, than that. So eventually when a person is ready, they, they, should be, they should go to the next step of forgiveness, which starts with self-forgiveness, really. Um, if you start forgiving yourself for feeling the way you have, feel, you have been feeling about yourself. Um, forgive yourself for all of thinking you thinking of yourself as a failure or thinking of yourself as a as something less than what you really are um, you know so it, it really starts with um, you know, self-forgiveness uh, so I, I wanted to uh, um, introduce that as well although I know that you know <laughs> we're not gonna I'm not gonna be able to talk extensively about the topic but it, I, I have always to, come back yeah I have to mention it um, because it is it is something that is of so such vital importance on the road to forgive on the road to healing uh, emotional um, spiritual healing uh, mm -hmm. psychological healing involves forgiveness um, forgiveness has been associated with several positive outcomes for um, a healing when it comes to the healing process. So it, it, it is something that ultimately um, we will have to confront on our journey um, of healing. <clears throat> Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, but but it, there, again, there's a lot of misinformation around it. And um, just what, just how you engage it is, is um, right. there's a lot of common misunderstandings about it. Um, but it is highly beneficial, is a highly beneficial practice to engage in. Okay. Well, do you think that maybe you'll be able to come on at another time and discuss forgive, forgiveness more in depth? Um, yes, I, um, I do. I put him on the spot, right? I know, right? <laughs> you know, as, 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 as Louis is saying that, I, I do have a plan with a friend of mine. We are uh, planning a a, a, um, a forgiveness um, a, a workshop later in the year. So okay, um, talking with you about it might be a good way of um, kind of introducing that Introducing too. it, yeah. yeah. And then again, yeah. if you do come out with that, there might be people who would love Who may to engage, it. exactly. And if it's a virtual platform, then most definitely <laughs> yeah. it would be something that, that I think folks would like to definitely be a part of. Oh yeah, it's been it's been a part of my um, work now for the last twenty years. I've focused on forgiveness um, because it's um, it's so key, but yet um, 
people have to engage it in 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 a way that is helpful for them and not and not give in to a lot of the the mis uh, information that is constantly surrounding um, um, the topic. Unfortunately, a lot of the misinformation does come from um, religious people. Um, and this is not a put down, it's just something that I've um, noticed um, over the years. Uh, that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to tackle that. But of course, you know, it's that hour. Um, and um, we really thank you, Dr. Reynolds, for having this discussion. Like I said, and like the research says, people need to stop saying you don't need nobody. <laughs> um, because that is not true. Um, you gotta Definitely figure out not. why you're saying that, and you need <clears throat> to find a way <clears throat> to get yourself to the point where you're able to embrace the possibilities of being in a relationship. So I think that's I think that's the problem there no. That why you say that they, they, they don't need nobody. I don't right. think nobody needs nobody, but they still want. Right. They should have the want to have somebody with them. Exactly. But again, that's, that's a defense, defense. Right that's when, a defense when, mechanism. That's a defense. Exactly. When they when they hear the need, oh yeah, the defense want. quick about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, well I want to thank you guys again. Um Ranchi, you know, last minute I asked you. I appreciate it because um and Dr. Reynolds again, thank you. And Louis, of course, thank you as well. And all of our listeners, um, we hope that you gain something from it. And um it, it gives you a different perspective and hopefully put something in you that might change you if you were one of those people. So um everybody, please stay safe, be well. And we will be back next week. Oh, and by the way, I have an announcement. Um, I'll be putting out a flyer because we will be, I will be in St. Croix in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to have a painting with a purpose um, event. Uh, but I'll let everybody know more about it. So we will be right. here. Definitely. Thanks again, um, Franchi and Dr. Reynolds uh, for coming on board. Debbie, that was a pleasure. And just as always in fashion. I don't change it up today, though. Love freely, love truly, and love passionately. I think I said yeah. that the last time. Walk on to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take Thank care, you. folks. Thank you all. Everybody take care. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Good night, guys. <laughs>